Welcome. In this video tutorial, we will use Data Viewer to analyze data collected using Weblink's web page component. Before analyzing the data I recorded with the website tracking project we created in the previous tutorial, I want to first illustrate how Data Viewer parses and displays data collected with Weblink's web page component. I'll do that by loading in a different data set in which three participants freely browsed a single website, the SR Research website. First, we'll import the EDF files into a data viewer viewing session. In these recordings, participants were free to navigate around the website however they wanted, and as a result, some pages were only viewed by one participant, and other pages, such as the home page, were viewed multiple times for different durations by each participant. Data viewer handles this scenario by making a distinction between whole recordings and segments. Each visit to each web page that was viewed during the recording becomes an individual segment. By default, Data Viewer groups the data by web page in the inspector panel, with each segment or visit to that page nested underneath. You can also click on the whole web link trials. There's one for each participant in this data. If you click on a whole trial, you can also navigate to the individual segments using these buttons in the main trial view window. For example, clicking the number 2 takes you to the second web page viewed by this participant. You can click this button to get back to the whole trial. Let's take a quick look at how Data Viewer displays web page data. In the default spatial overlay view, you can see that the entire web page is shown, no matter its length. So long web pages, like this blog post, will appear quite small. You can use the zoom tools to zoom in and out, and then use the scroll bar to move up and down the page. Alternatively, you can click the Fit to Width button. This effectively limits the view to what was visible to the participant on their screen during browsing. Again, you can use the scroll bar to scroll up and down the page. Note that Data Viewer has automatically applied scroll compensation to the gaze data. In other words, the fixations and saccades are displayed over the part of the web page that the person was looking at, as if the entire page had been visible during the recording. Of course, in reality, only part of the page was visible at any one time, and all of the fixations were made to the screen. You can get a clearer idea of what Data Viewer is doing with scroll compensation by toggling it on and off in the Weblink section of the Preferences tab. In the vast majority of analysis scenarios, it makes sense to leave scroll compensation on. Scroll compensation and the ability to see the entire web page in the spatial overlay view allow meaningful heat maps to be created. Heat maps can be created for individual segments or combining all segments in a grouping node, just as heat maps can be created at the trial or group level with static image stimuli. The ability to zoom in and out and scroll in the spatial overlay view is very useful when creating interest areas. There are four rows of images, so I'll create four separate interest areas. I could run an interest area report later to get an idea of how long the images were viewed as a percentage of the total viewing time to the page. As with any data viewer analysis, I can save these interest areas as a set and then apply that interest area set to all of the segments for this page by setting the default interest area set property of its grouping node. You can see that the interest areas are visible for each of the segments that I select. In addition to the spatial overlay view, Data Viewer allows recordings to be played back with the playback animation view. Note that in this view, the scroll compensation applies to the interest areas. You can play back individual segments like this one, or play back whole recordings. If you play back the whole recording, the segments are indicated on the timeline and you can use the buttons to jump to any individual segment. If you toggle off the Fit to Width button, the entire length of the web page is shown. By default, the playback animation view shows gaze over the static images of the web pages that Weblink automatically captures. Weblink takes image captures when web pages are exited, so if a web page contains dynamic content, such as the video that plays on our manufacturing page, 
you will see that content as it appeared just before the next web page was loaded. In order to see the dynamic content, you can click this button and choose instead to play back the gaze data over the video capture that Weblink also creates. This can be very useful if a website contains other dynamic content, such as pop-ups. Now that we have seen how Data Viewer groups and displays data recorded with Weblink's web page component, let's take a quick look at the data I collected with the online shopping project, which we created in the previous video tutorial. I've created and saved a new viewing session, so first I'll import the EDF files. This is just example data, so there are only four of them. By default, Data Viewer groups the data by web page, as with the earlier data. So this first grouping node contains four segments, one for each participant, and each segment contains the data for this web page. As before, Data Viewer shows both the individual segments grouped by web page and the whole segmented recordings in the inspector panel. Unlike the previous data, here the individual segments and whole recordings are identical, as each web page component was used to record participants viewing a single web page rather than freely browsing an entire website. As before, in the spatial overlay view you can view the entire page or click the fit to width button and scroll up and down. We can also create heat maps either for a single segment like this, or at the grouping node level, in which case the resulting heat map reflects the data from all of the segments grouped under that node. Because we included a user variable that recorded whether or not the participants saw the health leaflet first, we can use that variable to group the data. I can now apply a separate colour for each group. I'll make the group who saw the leaflet red and the group that didn't see the leaflet blue. Now I can regroup the data by web page again. You can see that the colouring has been applied both to the fixations in the trial view window and to the segments in the inspector panel. If I click on the Aggregate Mode button, Data Viewer displays all of the fixations from the segments clustered under the grouping node, and we can get a quick sense of whether or not there are any group differences. Another approach would be to use our group variable to subgroup the data. So now segments are grouped by web page and whether or not the participant read the health leaflet. Having grouped our data in this way, we can now create a difference map by clicking on one grouping node, then holding down the control key and clicking on the second. We can now right click and select create difference fixation map. The heat map for the second selected node is subtracted from the heat map for the first node. So this difference map suggests that participants who did not read the leaflet, our first selected node, look more at the product information and less at the nutritional information than participants who did read the health leaflet. I'll turn off aggregate mode and regroup the data by web page for the next steps. The aim of the experiment was to determine whether gaze to the product and nutritional information varied, both as a function of pizza type and whether the participant had read a health leaflet prior to viewing the web pages. So the first step is to create some interest areas. I'll do that quickly for this first web page. For more information about how to create and work with interest areas, please see the Data Viewer video tutorial series. Once all of the interest areas have been created, I can save the interest area set to disk and then use it as the default interest area for the grouping node. Now the interest areas have been applied to all of the segments for this web page. I'll do the same thing for the other web pages and edit that process out. I created interest areas for all four web pages and applied them as the default interest area template for the web page grouping nodes. So now each segment has the appropriate interest areas applied. Before running any reports, it's always a good idea in any analysis to set an interest period first, and this is a particularly critical step for data collected with Weblink's web page component. 
Because of the way in which web pages load in browsers, there is no clear signal when a page has been fully drawn. If I toggle on message visibility, you can see that Weblink sends a message when the page first loads into the browser, but this is not necessarily the time at which all drawing operations were complete. As a result, there will always be some additional gaze data at the start of each recording. Here you can see there are fixations present from before the web page loaded. Similarly, there will also be additional data at the end of the recording. To exclude these fixations from our analysis, we need to set an interest period. If you want, you can identify the exact time in each recording when the page is fully loaded by using the animated playback view and toggling the video image button so that the video capture plays in the background. I'll toggle off the interest area of visibility. You can pause the playback and then use these buttons to step forward and backward frame by frame. Once you have identified the point at which the page is fully loaded, you can right click in the inspector panel and insert a message. If you use the same message for each recording, you can then use that message to define the onset of an interest period. You can use this trial response message to define the end of the interest period. Determining the precise onset for each individual web page segment in this way and using the message you inserted to define the interest period onset is recommended if you want to be sure that you create interest periods that limit any output reports to the exact time that the full page was visible. For the purposes of this quick analysis, I'm happy to assume that the page was sufficiently loaded after 1000 milliseconds. So I will create a new interest period with the interest period manager. Give it a sensible name and then use the URL changed message as the start event and add a 1000 millisecond offset. I could then use the trial response message to define the offset as with the previous approach or just set a fixed duration. I'll go with a fixed duration of 29 seconds. Now that we've set an interest period, we can simply run an interest area report and choose output variables such as interest area label and useful metrics such as fixation count and dwell time. Weblink automatically creates a number of potentially useful variables that are specific to web page data, such as the web page height and width. These can be very useful for subsequent analysis and are also available in the trial, fixation and saccade reports. The user variable we created defining pizza type and the participant variable defining group that we created are also available. Once an interest area report has been generated, it can be further processed in Excel or statistics software such as R or SPSS. I hope this video tutorial was useful. Please do check out the other videos in this series. And as ever, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our support service via the support forum or email.